Okay, welcome to BC310, Church and Ministry Administration. All right, our course on Church and Ministry Administration. Thank you all for joining. Uh, let's take a moment to pray and we will start. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you that uh, we could get together and uh, uh, learn. We pray for all those who have joined us online. Uh, we pray, God, that things we learn uh, will be useful for us in uh, the ministry you've called us to do and the work that we will be doing in the days to come. We pray that the understanding we gain uh, will be useful for our lives and ministries. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, did all of you get the notes for this course? Um, church and ministry administration, just have a look. Um, those of you online, you would have downloaded um, the notes, uh, the PDFs, um, so you can follow along. And those are in class. You will have the printed notes. You got it? Oh, not yet. One minute. They're still looking for that. Huh? Only one. Oh, can you ask? Um, uh, just check Nirantari. Nirantari. Um, See if um, I'm sorry, they're just looking for the um, printed uh, uh, lecture notes. All right, so um, those of you online, you would have uh, downloaded the PDF. I'm just going to go ahead and share this. Uh, and we will get started. All right. Okay. So, uh, church and ministry administration. Right. Now, what we must understand is uh, that in, in in Christian ministry. In Christian ministry, um, sometimes we think when we when we talk about ministry, we talk about serving God. Uh, we think, well, it's only about preaching, worship, prayer, and uh, ministering the word, and so on. Uh, all of those that those are true. Those are all you know expressions of ministry. But behind all that, especially you know, in the, if you're talking about a local church or a Christian a ministry, behind all that, there has to be good organization, right? There has to be good organization. And so our goal is to learn how to combine uh, the ministry of the Word and the Spirit along with good, skillful organization and administration. In order that, in order to be able to be impactful, to, in order to be able to serve people well. Now, of course, if somebody is just doing, you know, ministry by themselves, okay, you're you're all just doing by yourself. All you're doing is somebody's calling you. You're going and preaching. Okay, maybe in that in that situation, maybe you don't need too much of uh, administration organization but even there you have to be careful suppose you give somebody a time and a day and a time saying i will come on such a day and preach you better be there right you can't say oh i don't know i don't know i forgot you can't say that right so even there there is certain amount of planning and organization that's involved right but definitely uh, when we are doing something bigger you know when you have many people involved and you're serving many people, 
you need to have a good organization, good administration behind all that ministry that is happening. Uh, without that, very often uh, we lose our effectiveness. Uh, we cannot serve many people, uh, and we will not be able to take care of you know many things. But if we combine the two, that is, you combine good organization and administration with the spiritual side, combine the two, then it can you know really have big impact. It can maximize, and uh, I have seen I have seen the differences difference in, in the sense. For example, somebody may be very anointed, very anointed, uh, you know, and uh, all of that, but their reach and their influence, uh, how many people they're able to minister, is, is they may not, it may not be much. Whereas on the other hand, you might pe see people who maybe they're not, you know, that strong in the spiritual side, but because organizationally they may be very strong. They're able to serve more people, right? So it's like the organization becomes, you know, a support for them to take the ministry and reach more people. So both, are, you know, we need to combine the two to have a lot of impact. And so what we want to do uh, in this course is um, to share some of the things that we have learned and that we are trying to, uh, uh, you know, that we are practicing here uh, in at APC in terms of uh, organization and administration just uh, share that and um, we we will be speaking from mainly from a church perspective but definitely all these things will apply even if somebody is running a christian organization that is not a church even if you're running uh, you know uh, any christian organization all of these things will be relevant will be useful and so you can take it and also for those of us who are in the ministry you know at some point uh, if you start serving, you're going to be part of an organization. You're going to be part of, you know, a, 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 a ministry where there will be administration and will be organization. So you need to understand how these things work and uh, how you can uh, improve and, and make these things uh, better. Right. So we're going to cover, uh, you know, starting from, uh, you know, we'll just talk a little bit about. What's the importance of good administration? What are objectives? How do you set up a trust? Uh, how do you uh, create an organizational structure? Uh, what are some policies, guidelines, standards that you need to put in place? Think through. Um, uh, then systems, processes. Uh, how do you build your team? How do you hire people? Uh, culture, the workplace. Um, talk about finance. A legal side of things, uh, planning, coordination, how do you build teams, ministry teams, volunteers, um, the church culture, projects, and so on. So uh, we're covering a lot. So uh, actually, you know, uh, uh, each of the, uh, a lot of these things you can spend a lot of time to, you know, uh, to talk about it, but we're just going to expose ourselves, give us some understanding. And uh, those are the skills that we need, we will develop. Uh, you know, uh, by practicing and doing things, so on. Okay, so let's get started uh, on why we need good administration. You know, some sometimes some uh, you know you might meet some pastors or people they don't care about this. They tell uh, get up in the morning, do something, go preach. You know, they don't care about administration, organization. Uh, and if you talk to them and say, they say, why, why all that? God will take care of everything. You just go preach. So it's sometimes difficult to tell them that, hey, you need to have be organized. You need to have administration. You need to have people uh, helping you and uh, taking care of different things. You know? So it's sometimes difficult. They, they don't understand. So uh, hopefully we can uh, speak to them. Uh, both from a biblical perspective and a practical perspective. So when you look at it, things from a biblical perspective, you see that God is a God of order, design, organization, creativity. So you look at God's creation. Things are in order. You know, there is order in in so much of it. You know how, uh, example, even plants and trees. Uh, you put a seed. 
it goes in the ground, it comes up, and the way it grows, everything happens over and over again in a very, you know, you know how it works. It's not like, oh, I'll put in a seed in the ground, I don't know if it'll come or not, and uh, I don't know whether that seed will become an animal or no. A seed, will, you know, I put a tomato seed, I'll get a tomato plant. It's not like I put a seed and I don't know what kind of plant will come. You know, there is order, there is design, there is organization. The sun always rises in the east, and you know, it's not like next day we don't know which side the sun is coming. <laughs> it's it's organized. It's it's all in order. So we seek order in God's creation, and the Bible tells us. Let's go to First Corinthians fourteen, and verse thirty-three, where the apostle Paul. Of course, he's addressing just, you know, uh, he's addressing a church, uh, church service context or church gathering context. But First Corinthians fourteen, and verse thirty-three, he says, "For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints." Right, and then verse forty, First Corinthians fourteen forty. Let all things be done decently and in order. So even this is, of course, he's addressing a gathering when believers are gathering. And in that gathering, he says, you know, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. So uh, God doesn't want things to run around like in some confusion. Nobody knows what's going on. No, there's, there's peace. And he so said, let all things be done decently and in order. So even in how... Uh, the church service gathering has to, things that have to happen in that gathering, let it be done in order. Right? So we can look at things from a biblical perspective. And when you, uh, some examples in the Old Testament, you know, and I'll just make mention of some things. For example, when the, when God, uh, and you read about this in Numbers chapter 10, when the people of Israel were, were marching or journeying in towards the land of promise to Canaan. At one point, after they built the tabernacle, in Numbers 10, God gives Moses and he gives the people of Israel detailed instructions. He says, on the four sides of the tabernacle, in the, so the tabernacle is in the middle of the camp. On each side, three tribes. These three tribes be on the north. These three tribes, east, west, south. So 12 tribes, right? four sides. This is how you must camp. Then when you're ready to move, you blow the trumpet. Everybody is getting ready. First, you, you know, these tribes go in order, like, like how we would say, like a march past. Everybody in order. And you know, we read this in the book of Numbers, and you're like, God, why so much detail? Why are you giving them all these? Things? Why can't you say everybody pack up, start, hello, walk? You know, no. So from there, we get a little idea that God wants things to be organized, you know, not just everybody going. You know, you move in order. You move in a in a very you know, like you almost you say, like a disciplined way. You're moving. God's people have to march as they make this journey. You know, so you can see the order, in, uh, the order and the discipline, organization that's coming uh, in over there. So uh, the order in the camps, we we, we see that. Uh, we uh, we can also think about uh, Moses uh, in Exodus 18, Numbers 11, uh, when Moses is caring for the people. At one point, he's the only leader. And all the people are coming to him. Then Jethro, uh, Moses' father-in-law, comes and says, Moses, if you do like this, you'll be gone. So do what I'm telling you. You appoint leaders over groups of 50, groups of 100. You appoint leaders. And every small problem, let them go to them. Let them go to their leader. But every big matter, let them bring it to you. And Moses does that, you know, which I think probably was 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 such a important and a wise decision. You know? So Moses, you have so many people to care for. They are, they can all of them cannot come to you, but you appoint leaders over smaller groups. 
let them go there. Then so there you see that Moses and his leader. Later on, God tells Moses, Moses, you select 70 elders, 70 leaders. I will put my anointing on them, and they will help you in taking care of all these people. So again, there you're seeing how there is organization, how God is, you know, uh, uh, telling uh, Moses to have more people to take care of the big uh, community, big nation. Right? Uh, we also see in worship in the tabernacle, and this is amazing. Uh, in, in 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 David's time, uh, First Chronicles twenty five, uh, when when David wants to have, you know, he want he wants to have continuous worship in the tabernacle. It should go on continuously. And it actually went on for 33 years, nonstop. How did he do it? It says, very organized. He, for every hour, for, yeah, every hour, he had teams of people. You know, he had worship leaders. He had uh, so many musicians uh, who would come. They would come in their appointed slot, and they would lead the worship. And there were thousands of people serving in the tabernacle. And it was highly organized. You can read about that in First, uh, First Chronicles 25. So uh, to, for, the, for the worship to go on in the tabernacle, it didn't happen at random. It was highly organized. And that's how worship was happening. You know, and it went on nonstop for, uh, for, 20, uh, for 33 years. There was worship going on. But it was very organized. There were teams that were given every slot. You come. You do your worship, next team come, do your worship, next team come, do your worship. So continuous worship was happening. Yeah. So we see these examples of how uh, the, the work of God, in this case, in different, in different expressions, how the work of God was very organized. You know, It just didn't happen, oh, everybody just go do uh, how you want. Even in the rebuilding of the walls, when Nehemiah was rebuilding the walls, Around the walls, he had people, teams of people. He had those who were doing the work, and he had those who would be like soldiers. They, they will be on guard. So he appointed, okay, you all do the work, but we need some guards to be watching in case the enemy comes to attack or cause disturbance. They will raise an alert. He said, whenever there's an alarm, then everybody go to that place. You know, you go there to... Uh, you know, to help protect the people. So again, there he was organized, even in the rebuilding of the walls. Or when you come into the New Testament, uh, in the local church, uh, in Acts chapter 6, we see how uh, when there was the matter of distributing food to the people, uh, the apostle said, you find seven men. We will give them responsibility to distribute food to the people. So even in that matter, so okay, you appoint seven people, let them distribute the food and make sure everybody gets their, their uh, share. In First Timothy chapter 3, and I'm just you know, giving us these examples, the Apostle Paul writes about spiritual leaders and he also writes about people who will take care of the practical things. We call them elders and deacons. Right? So there are, we are seeing even in the church that some people who are dealing with spiritual matters, and there are some people who are dealing with the administrative side of things, even in the church. Right? Uh, and we see that again in Romans 16, when Paul writes about uh, different people who are serving. He talks about uh, our sister Phoebe, who is uh, responsible for some business matters of the church. And uh, she's taking care of those things, and he tells her, uh, just uh, uh, support her, encourage her. Okay, but now let's look at some scriptures. We're going to go to Romans 12, verse 4 through 8. Let's go to Romans 12, 4 through 8. Just want to point some things out here. Romans 12, 4 through 8. So we're looking at it from a biblical perspective. Why should we have administration? We're seeing it's, it's something we see in the Bible. It's Old Testament, New Testament. Now let's look at some specific scriptures. Romans 12, 4 through 8. Somebody could read it, please. 
Romans 12, verse 4 till 12. 8. Oh, okay. sorry. Okay. 4 till uh, 8. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our ministry. Are ministering he who teaches in teaching he who exhorts in exhortation he who gives with liber, liberate liberality, liberality yeah. he who leads with diligence he who shows mercy with cheerfulness okay so this is not a complete list of all the functions, right? It's just a small list. But what Paul is saying, he says, see, in, 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 in the church, in, we have many members, and all these have different functions. Different functions. And he's mentioning some functions. He's talking about uh, gifts that help us fulfill our functions. He's talking about prophecy. He's talking about ministry, which is serving, any kind of serving. Uh, he's talking about teaching. Exhortation and encouraging, giving, generosity. And he talks about leading or leadership. And he so talks about showing mercy. Right? So that means God has given gifts to different people. So every person has a function and they've been given gifts for that function. And notice the, some of the gifts. He's, he mentions about leadership. So uh, the leadership could be in so many different things. They could be, uh, you know, leading a team. Uh, they could be leading uh, a particular kind of team. Uh, they could be providing leadership in, you know, uh, organizing or leadership in administration or leadership in finance. It could be that leadership could be expressed in so many different ways, right? But that ability to lead is a gift that God gives to His people, right? So we must recognize that, and therefore we understand that uh, in order to exercise these gifts, leadership, organization, serving, uh, it, they have those functions in the body, and we need to make use of those functions or support them. First Corinthians 12, we see a little bit more detail here. First Corinthians 12 and verse 28. First Corinthians 12. 28. Uh, and 28. Yeah. And God has appointed these in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, and that uh, miracles, then gift of healings, helps administrations, varieties of tongues. Mm. So, saying God has appointed this. God has put this in place. And of course, he gives us a list. But look at the last few. There is helps and administrations. Helps. Helping in anything. It can be helping in finance, helping in, I don't know, just helping anything. It means it's a supportive kind of a work. Helps. And then he says administrations. Administration. Governing, organizing. You know, so helps and administrations are God-given functions in the church. So somebody says, oh, I don't want administration. Why are you rejecting? It's in, God has put it in the church. Right? Helps. Oh, I don't need anybody to do anything. This is church. This is spiritual. No, no, no. It's in the church. It's in the church. These people have to function. They help in various things to run, you know, uh, to make sure that the, the body of Christ is strong. Right? So we must understand that organization, administration is something God Himself has put there for His people. And it's a valid thing. It's not something we should ignore. And that uh, the last biblical side point that we want to mention is that when Paul is writing to various local churches, 
he tells them keep things in order set things in order we also we already read first Corinthians 14 and 40 let all things be done decently and in order to be done properly uh, uh, in the way the church is functioning, whether it's the gathering of the church or uh, how the church is being admitted. In Titus 1 and verse 5, he tells Titus, Titus, I want you to set in order the things for many churches. Set them in order. You know, Don't let it just happen as it, no. Set things in order. Right? So just going from the Old Testament, coming into the New Testament, we can show biblically, that there, God has always wanted order, administration, organization to be there for his people. Okay. Are you all with me so far? Yeah, any questions? All right. So that's a biblical perspective. Now look at it from a practical perspective. You look at it from a practical perspective, uh, there is a need for efficiency. You know, people in the congregation, they expect the local church to be organized and efficient. You know, for example, uh, somebody may say, I need a letter uh, for school, uh, for admission to school. I need a, a letter say, stating that I'm a member of this church or, uh, you know, they, they need some documents you know, for their baptism certificate or marriage certificate, things like that. So they, will, they, they reach out to the church. Now the church must provide it. We can't say, no, 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 I'll only preach the gospel, I'll only preach the word, I can't give you any letter. What? What will they do? Because practically these are things that are needed, you know, to get admissions. In school, school will say, bring a letter to show that you're attend part of a church, if they're joining a school sometimes. Or for other practical things, they need some letters. Right? Uh, or um, And so we have to be organized, we have to be efficient, we need to be able to give these kinds of things. Uh, secondly, a uh, second practical perspective is that people want to serve with their skills. So people want to serve, and some of their skills may not be in singing, it may not be in preaching, but it may be in doing some help or administration or organization. So there are people with those kind of skills, and they need to be willing to be given the opportunity uh, to serve in the church or in, in any area that they, they feel interested in, right? And a third uh, practical perspective is even the world in which we live, um, uh, they expect such competencies from the church, right? For example, nowadays, uh, if people want to know uh, about our church timings, especially when we're in a city, they expect us to have a website, you know? It's something they expect you. Oh, website, you have to register for events, uh, get information about the church. They expect, oh, can we see? Right? So these are things that it's like, especially in, in, a church, in a city setting, they expect you to have these kinds of things. Right? So we can't say, no, 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 we don't have, you know, we don't want you just come. You know. These are things that in the world in which we live, it's expected that you have these things, okay? So let's talk a little bit about some common excuses. Um, so, you know, sometimes when we talk to churches, ministries, people make some excuses. What kind of excuses are there? Uh, sometimes, you know, they say, uh, hey, we went to Bible college. They never taught us about uh, church and ministry administration. So that's why we have this course, right? To talk about it because it's, it's important. And uh, sometimes in seminaries, they don't talk about this. You know, yeah, they may cover other things, but they don't talk about management and leadership and organization, administration. You know? So sometimes that's an excuse, or we never learned how to do this. Or uh, we don't have the means to hire skilled staff. Okay? At least you can have volunteers, right? If you don't have, if you can't hire, skilled people, at least start with volunteers, right? Uh, or uh, sometimes spiritual, people say, hey, ministry must be done only by those who are very spiritual. Okay, fine. There are people who can pray, there are people who can worship, but uh, who will manage the money? Who will 
take care of the count, you know, finances. Who will make sure, you know, other practical things that need to be done will do it. Right? Of course, we understand spiritual ministry, but these things have to be done by people who know how to do those things. So you need those people. Right? Uh, so there is spiritual ministry. Uh, we we focus on spiritual things, but let others come in and do uh, what's needed. So some sometimes they say, "Oh, we don't want to become like corporate." You know, this is this is spiritual, so we don't want to become like corporate. Well, uh, you need to have good organization, and for that, you need people with those kind of skills. And it's good to be running like a corporate. And I tell our staff, you know, we have to be better than government offices, and we have to be better than corporates. You know, so I tell them to work in church will be more difficult if you want to work in corporate. If you want an easy job, you go work in the corporate. If you want some serious job, you come and work for church. You know, so uh, we had to change their mindset. They think like, oh, corporate life is very hard. So let me just go work for the church. I turn it around. I say, no, no, no. Corporate life is easy. You work for church, you have to give give your best. You know, because we don't want to have people have that wrong idea. Oh, I can just uh you know uh, give god something second best um you know uh, or sometimes people say this is god's work he doesn't need human involvement of course he needs us and he wants us to you know put our hearts and minds together to serve him okay so any questions here on just this first chapter which is uh the importance of good administration why we need to have good administration any questions on it before we go to the next lesson? Those of you online, any questions? Have you faced any? Okay, I just uh, ask. I'll ask you a question. Uh, have you faced situations where, in a church or a ministry, uh, people don't, you know, uh, and it's not a complaint about churches or ministries. I'm just observation. Uh, have you seen where people don't want or are not open to a good organization or want to have organization administration? Have you uh, run into those kinds of situations? Anyone? Anyone online? Anyone here? They say hey, they don't care about it. I don't want you to like complain. Just just <laughs> to see, learn from your experience. That's all. Have you observed or? In the ministry situations. Go ahead. Huh? Oh, the question. No, have you seen situations where in Christian ministry, uh, people don't really care about or they're not really interested in administration, good administration, organization, uh, because maybe they're not informed or maybe they don't see it as being important. Uh, they think only ministry is only spiritual work. Um, uh, Star, actually, I saw this kind of ministry when it's connected to me also. Like, so uh, the church was growing in a spiritual way, very nicely, but in the other hand, there is uh, because of uh, not good uh, administration. Mm. Like in in the time came, like everything become finished. Church is going on, but leaders are like one leader went to another place. Mm. Another leader went to another place, so because of not the maintenance, mm. it's happened, Pastor. Yeah. So, the, so, so you're saying everything was going nicely, but leaders moved uh, no, and because of not a good uh, maintenance, or like we say, what we are talking about this organization. Organization. Mm. So there is not nicely organization, mm. and uh, like it's okay. We will do. It will happen mm. uh, like that. It was going on. And then what happened to the church? Like uh, what happened? The uh, main pastor, she she was lady pastor. Mm. She went somewhere with her uh, family daughter. Mm. So there is one pastor after her. So some misunderstanding happened between them, and uh, so they have branch church also. So the person pastor who is uh, next to the lady pastor, because of uh, someone entered the church. Mm. Someone newly came in a two years, in a one year, she trusted to another person and she gave everything to her, him, to sort of like a, to maintain, like as a, a, to preach. 
and uh, the person who was to next to him next to her uh, he uh, he was like disappointed because all people was thinking like he will be the next person here he will because he, he everyone knows him very nicely from mm. childhood mm. but uh, because of uh, not organized in a good way something happened and the pastor went in a different place mm. Mm. and the pastor who came in the middle uh, after even 6 month uh the lady pastor was there they are becoming like not good relations mm. so there's a breakdown in yeah all the relationship yeah, yeah kind of That's and our members are like very disappointed some members are okay mm. some member are disappointed some member went a different place some member don't want to be stay in there because everything mm. went differently mm. yeah pastor it's happened yeah yeah so people get affected oh, when these kinds of things happen yeah that's true yeah so i see on the chat the chaya sharing um but there there was the pastor made a structure there was a pastor who made a structure but the problem was between leaders and the church um uh, oh pastor was interfering in the personal life of people so yeah yeah that's a different yeah that's a kind of a different kind of a problem where i mean i'm just seeing in the chat where a pastor interferes in every matter in people's lives and then it causes lots of problems yeah so there has to be clear boundaries uh and what we do what we don't do yeah yeah so i think uh for us to slowly understand the importance of you know organization so on and at the same time we have to maintain the balance right we can't be so focused on the organization we have to remember it is a spiritual first and foremost it is a spiritual ministry uh and the organization is only supporting the spiritual ministry so you know so we keep telling people in church the organization all that we are doing it's supporting the spiritual ministry the important part is the spiritual and then we have good organization it makes spiritually it makes us uh be more effective and we can serve people better if we have good organization okay so um let's move to the next lesson lesson number 2 where what are the objectives of good administration at right, page number 6 right so when we say you know we want to have good administration what are we trying to achieve and so on and uh, just giving us some perspective so first of all i think it's important to recognize that even church administration is spiritual ministry you know like when we are doing uh routine work administration so like for example we have accountants we have um, people who are doing all kinds of administrative work we need to help them understand that you know you're actually doing spiritual ministry because your function and the gifts you have are god given so if somebody is doing accounting or if somebody is doing i don't know just handling communications you know responding to all the emails answering calls or if somebody is just uh, you know putting some certain you know like for example we have people here running bible college or in the office running the office different things uh their role their function and their gifts are god given so it is a spiritual ministry Right? Sometimes we try to think, oh, they are just doing all things. Only people are preaching, worship. That is only spiritual. No, everything is spiritual because it is from God. Just that the work, the functions are different. You know, so we see in Scripture, like we saw in Romans twelve, uh, Paul is saying, you know, there are many members, there are different functions, and there are different gifts. But those members, functions, and gifts are all God given. they are all from god okay and um, when people are serving whatever service they're doing they're serving god and they're serving people right it's from god and uh, it's uh, uh, from him so we also saw in first corinthians 12:28 we saw helps and administrations these are god has set them in the church god has set 
people who are helpers. God has set people who are administrators. God put them there. Right? So it doesn't mean they are less important. Yeah, they may, you know, yeah, he puts apostle and prophet and teacher and miracles. He puts them in that order, but God put them in the church. Right? So those who are helping, those who are doing administrations, which would be like being, you know, uh, uh, governing or leading or guiding, organizing, all of that comes under administrations. All of that is something God has appointed. Uh, in First Timothy chapter three, we see both spiritual leaders and we see deacons. So we see both categories in the church. And the deacons are generally people who are taking care of all the uh, administration, organization, but they are given there by God. So we need to help people understand that that whatever you're doing, it is a spiritual ministry. It is for God and it is to serve His people, right? Uh, an administration or organization um, should be seen as art, science, and a spiritual gift. Bottom of page six. Right? That means uh, there are some abilities that people have which make them well suited for this. Right? So some people are very good with numbers. Some people are very good with uh, working with people. Some people are very good with coming up with strategies, ideas. Some people are very good with organizing. So they have that. It's part of them. So that what we have to is an art. Like it's part of them. It comes naturally to them. You know. And then it's also a science, which means you can learn some of these skills. You can learn how to organize. You can learn how to budget. You can learn how to um, uh, uh, work with people so so there is this art meaning this is the something that that's innate to you there is the science and there is also the empowering of the holy spirit this is it comes as a spiritual gift so there are aspects that god gives you know to doing these things so administration organization is a coming together of art science and gifting right so it's all coming together and we have to develop uh, in all of these areas uh, as as god has designed us and given to each one. So recognize it. Now, um, I want to just, uh, you know, just in, in general, in general, there's a difference between leadership, management, and administration, generally speaking. So leaders are usually are people who are responsible for providing vision, strategy, right? So that usually comes from those who are leaders. They are visionary. A visionary means they're able to see something that's not there. You know. So, for example, uh, uh, suppose you stand in front of a piece of land. So, what do you see? So, I see a piece of land. But a visionary, they say, "Oh, I see, I see a nice building. I see a nice." You know. So, they're not just looking at the piece of land. They're seeing what can be there. It's not there yet. But they're able to see what can be there, you know. So that's a visionary. He's, he is able to see beyond the now, and they're strategic. Means they say, okay, here's how we can get there. Yeah, here's how we do those things. Uh, and then they are able to have influence over people, and they organize, and they are looking at organizational performance. So even I, for example, I look at okay, how's the church doing, and you know, looking at over everything. You know, making sure things are running uh, properly. Then you have people who are managers, a management. So that's coming closer to execution. You have to plan, you have to organize, you have to motivate people, and you're you're looking at various departments or units uh, and how those units are performing. So you have management, and then you have administration, which is like checking all the details, going down to one more level of detail. People are involved in. You know, scheduling, executing, account, accounting, or checking with in teams and individuals and individual performance. So you get into, you know, those levels. Okay. So um, there are different sets of skills needed in these areas, but in this course, we're kind of going to just put them all together, right? So we're not just purely talking from a leadership perspective or a management perspective, administration. We're just putting it all together to make it simple 
and we will talk about how all these things work. Okay, so just to uh, 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 clarify that and how we will approach this in the course. Okay, so what we'll do is now we'll take a break and we'll come back and uh, we'll talk about the objectives of good administration. We are on page seven in uh, in, in the notes and the, and we'll talk about some. Uh, we'll take this forward. Okay, so uh, let's go for a break. Come back in ten minutes and uh, feel free to ask your questions as well as we go through. Thank you. Okay.